What's up guys, it's Coach Drew, and today I'm gonna to break down the four main player types. The first one is a creator. A creator is someone like Steve Nash, or nowadays like Trey Young, that really has the ability to create for themselves or their teammates. Think of a great passing guard as a creator. The second main player type is a slasher. This is someone that, whether it's off the catch or off the dribble, has the ability to really beat defenders, get downhill, and they're always trying to get to the basket. Think of guys like Kelly Oubre. The third one is a sniper. These are guys that really have the ability to make shots, you know, whether it's off of cuts, whether it's off the catch, whether it's off the dribble. Think of guys like Bradley Beal that really have the ability to knock down shots. And the last one is an operator. Those are guys that really know how to get buckets. Think of Zach Levine, Jason Tatum, guys that score in a variety of different ways, whether it's in the mid-range, at the rim, or behind a three-point line. There are four main player types. You have to figure out which one you are so that you can ultimately improve your game in the most efficient and effective way possible. All right, now let's cover a series for creators. Now, creators have to have the ability to both score and create for themselves and their teammates. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out by just simply just making our go-to move, whatever that is. So if you're a guy that likes crossover jab, you can do the crossover jab and then explode. If you're somebody that likes between the leg float, then between the leg float, get outside your defender's hips and get downhill. The move really doesn't matter and it's gonna be different for each and every one of you guys. So whatever your go-to move is that allows you to get past your primary defender, use that right here for this series, okay? So now we do our go-to move. I'm gonna use the between the leg float and go. And now I attack. What we're gonna do is, once we beat our primary defender, we wanna get our eyes downhill on the rim and start to read our secondary defender. The guy right here, the 2-9 defender, the guy that's basically, you know, on the weak side sliding over, we're reading him now. If he's stunting, but he doesn't kind of take away our basket, we're just gonna go ahead and make a play and finish at the rim. So that would be option one. The second option we would do is if we do our go-to move right here, we beat our primary defender and we read the secondary defender, but we see them come over and take away our straight line drive, set up for a charge, we're gonna make a bounce pass to them at the block, the guy in the dunker spot, and that hopefully finishes at the rim. The third and final option what we'll do is we'll do our go-to move, beat our primary defender. Now if we look downhill and we see he's taken away our basket angle, but our dunker spot isn't available because this guy dropped help side defender, we're gonna have to skip it out for an open three point shot. Now let's take a look at each read full speed. So again, what we wanna do is we really wanna make progressive reads. I'm always trying to get to the rim first. If a defender takes that away, I'm looking at that defender's offensive player. Are they open? If they're open, I make a pass. If they're not open, it's because somebody helped them, they helped the helper, and then I find their player. Ultimately, if you have the ability to make progressive reads, you're gonna have the ability to be a great decision maker and ultimately you're a great creator. So right here, again, I float, I go, he didn't take it away, so I go ahead and finish it at the basket. The next thing I do is, now again, I'm thinking the same thing. So in my mind, I'm thinking get to the rim, I drive, he takes it away, bounce pass, and now I've got a dunker spot assist. And the third and final one, I do the exact same thing. I drive, he's not open, boom skick out, keep out, and knock it down. The biggest thing that you wanna do is make sure that every single time you drive with the intention to score. If you drive with the intention to pass, defenders are gonna be able to stunt and keep you in a guessing game. If you drive to the front of the rim and then just constantly make reads, you're gonna have a chance to be a great creator. Now let's work on a great series for slashers. Okay, slashers are players that need to be able to get downhill and get to the rim. That's what they're most comfortable doing. That's what they're most successful doing. So now we got a defender right here playing us live and we're sitting there in triple threat and we're reading. Okay, we're making reach jabs. We're constantly faking trigger steps. We're keeping the ball protected. The first read is we're gonna explode by this defender and if we see that they're on our inside, we're not gonna round out where they have a chance to kind of get back in the play and ultimately alter our shot at the rim. We're gonna take a second dribble and cut them off and if there's no 2-9 defender helping us out, we're just gonna go finish it. So that would just be basically an explosion and if we need a second dribble to cut off their angle, we do it. The second thing we're gonna do is the exact same thing, but this time if we explode by him and we see a help side defender, what we're gonna do is a slide by finish. A one, two, exchanging the ball from outside hand to inside hand, ultimately jumping and sliding to the midline and then finishing it so that defender doesn't take a charge on us and so that we have the ability to finish. The third and final read is we do the exact same thing, but this time when we take off, we don't beat him enough to really explode by and have an angle to kind of use that slide by but the secondary defender slides over to take a charge. So we're kind of stuck. 
So now what we're gonna do is we're either gonna do a step back or a bump fade away. I'm gonna use a bump fade away today where I bump into him, I hop, land on balance, keep the ball protected, and then jump up and fade away from both defenders so that ultimately I have the ability to score. Let's go over all three options. So the first one is that second dribble. So I'm here, I keep the ball protected, I'm messing with him, I drive, I bump him, and then I go ahead and finish at the rim. Now the second one is a slide by, so again, now the exact same thing, but now I explode by him, defender pulls over, we have to have the ability to finish still. So I'm here, I take off, I dribble, I slide, boom, and finish at the rim. All right, so the third and final one is now you're gonna do a bump fade. You could also do a step back in this scenario. So we drive, he's into us, bump, hop, and then fade away. Those are the three main things that you need to do in that series. Always trying to get down the hill first, then reading the secondary defender after that. All right, now let's work on a great series for snipers. Snipers are guys that need to be able to come off the screen and really catch and shoot and knock down shots. They have the ability to knock down shots in a variety of ways, which also means that defenders are gonna guard you in a variety of different ways. So this series is all about how to use a pin down with the different types of defenses that you're gonna see. So the first one is called lock and trail. So that's if, you know, this guy is basically right behind you. He knows you're gonna come off the screen. So all he's trying to do is kind of stay tagged, touching you the whole time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to start to come off the screen and we're gonna use a stop and go cut to bump him. And then we're gonna to curl to the ball and separate. Okay, the biggest thing is the change of speeds and the physicality. If you just go like this and he's in a lock and trail position, and you just kind of keep running, he's gonna get through the screen and when we catch the ball, we're not gonna be able to shoot an uncontested shot. We want uncontested shots, so we're gonna have to be physical. We start to cut, he's behind us, boom, stop, bump him. He's gonna have to stop himself so that he doesn't run into us and draw a foul and ultimately we'll free ourselves up for a shot. Now, if we start doing that over and over again and we're getting uncontested shots, the defense is gonna change. So now what he's gonna do is called wedge. He's gonna try to wedge through. So what he's trying to do is, He's trying to basically go over top the screen right here and basically deny me the ball without giving me an angle to back door. If I know he's doing this, what I'm gonna to try to do is I'm gonna to try to nudge him under the screen. So I walk to the screen, I nudge him to encourage him to kind of shoot the gap. When he does that, what I wanna do is act like I'm curling over top the screen and then bump and fade to free myself up for a corner J. The third and final way is now you got a really elite shooter. You got guys like Brad Beal, guys like Klay Thompson, who they're just saying, you know what? Deny him the screen. Make him go back door, we'll have help side right there. So in a game, if there was nobody in help side, we would just back door and hopefully get a back door layup. The truth is, if the coach made an adjustment, he's probably gonna pull over the defense as well. So we're gonna have to free ourselves up by not using the screen this way, but using the screen inside to outside and still create a shot because we know there's so much help side on the weak side. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start to act like I'm trying to get over top of the screen because that's his job is to keep me from not doing it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break off and go middle. This guy knows I'm a good shooter, so he's gonna trail behind me and then I'm gonna be able to free myself up for a catch and shoot. This is also a great opportunity for you to cut to different places. So sometimes you might be here and break off and use this screen and cut right to the elbow. But basically all you're gonna do is free yourself up and then find free space. All right, now let's cover a great series for operators. Remember, operators have the ability to score in a variety of different ways. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna teach you a series that'll allow you to score from behind a three-point line, at the rim, and in the mid-range using the same move, okay? So my go-to move is a between-the-leg float. You can use a float, you can use any kind of move that you really want. You always wanna to go to your strengths. But for me, that happens to be a between-the-leg float. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go between leg float and I'm gonna sell like I'm driving downhill. So I wanna use my breath, I wanna really take a breath, act like I'm getting ready to go downhill by throwing my shoulder. And if the defender drops, I'm gonna simply shoot a hezzy pull up J. So again, I'm right here, selling downhill and then ultimately end up rising up before they can get back in, alter or contest our shot. The second thing we wanna do is play off of that. So a good counter move looks exactly like the regular move because it is. You start to go to the original move, the defender takes that away and then you counter off of it. That's why it's called a counter move. So now I go between the legs, float outside, and I fake like I'm gonna shoot the ball. My hands get close together. Now I know in slow motion, it looks like a carry. When you go fast and full speed, your hand will be more here so that ultimately you don't get a violation in the game. And then you're gonna get downhill and make a play. So I'm right here, 
hand over top, and now ultimately I get downhill and finish the basket. Now if we do that exact same thing, the between the leg float into the trigger step, and we start to drive and we see help side defenders pulling over, or our primary defender gets back into play, we can either use a step back, a bump off, or any kind of mid-range move. Right now we're gonna work on a step back just to create space and ultimately give us an angle to score in the mid-range. So we've got our HESI pull up, we've got our trigger step into a finish at the rim, and then we've got our trigger step into a step back. If you have those three things and have the ability to make the right read, you're gonna be unstoppable with the Between the Leg Float Series. Here they are full speed. If I were you guys, I would change your mentality from how many moves to like, how do I get really great at one move? And then once you get really great at that move, build a counter move to it. And then once you build a counter move to it, then maybe you add another move. But like, if you think about the players, like the best players in the world, most of them have one go-to move that becomes a go-to series. It's not like they have a ton of different moves. Like you even look at James Harden, who has one of the biggest kind of skill bags in the league, Yes, he has everything in his game, but what does he really have? He really goes to this, and then he changes angles. He flips, and he flips his feet. He flips his feet, and then when he attacks, then he makes reads. He either sweeps up and gets a foul, or he'll just go quick and sneak in a finish, or he'll shoot that little touch floater that he does, or he'll go into a bump off or a step. So he has counter moves, but really he starts at the same thing every single time. He goes into hezies and goes between the leg float series, and then goes from there. If you think about Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant, I mean, well, his best thing was probably mid post. He was really good at just footwork, tapping and going. And if you look, he was always on his left pivot foot. Most of the time, you know what I mean? He was on his left pivot foot. So he got really good at a left pivot foot triple threat series. And if you start looking at like guys, they mostly have kind of their go-to move. Shaq was one of the most dominant players, if not the most dominant player ever. And I don't know if you guys have ever watched Shaq highlights, but young Shaq had a lot to his game. He actually had a lot of good footwork and all this kind of stuff, but when he was really his most dominant was when what he did was he took a dribble into your chest or your top shoulder, and if you didn't stop him, he would just kept bullying you and would dunk on you. If you did stop him, he would spin back and dunk on you. He didn't have a left hand. He would just flip it with his right hand or dunk. But he got really good at that, and that was when he was most dominant. So um, I think that the biggest thing that I wish more players realized was that it's better to be great at less than to be good at more. And, and it's weird, but like if, if, if you guys really told me like, would you rather have a big bag of tricks or would you be really good at shooting, finishing, and defending? I would take the shooting, finishing, and defending all day. Because if you can put the ball in the hoop, the only way you can do that is shoot it in there or finish it in there. And if you can play defense, stop them from putting the ball in the hoop, you're gonna have a chance to be a good player.